Guys, when I tell you, I was so strict with my savings that my mom thought I was broke. And that was the year that everybody was in luxury black girl. And I was like, oh my God, I want to be luxury. I want to be in luxury. I want to wear a dress that costs like 500 pounds. And then I had one saving account that was like, okay, on a rainy day, we can touch that one on a rainy day. But it has to be a really, really rainy day. Like you needed that money. You really, really needed it, Shola. That's why you're touching it. It's that helped my ISO account. I remember, I think it was 2019 when they stopped it. I remember telling all my friends, guys, this is a good way to save. I think that's enough of the small talk. I don't need to give up my number. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. My name is Shola. So today I'm going to be talking about how I saved nearly 100k for a deposit well most of the money was used for a deposit the rest was used for like furnishing my house and just making sure that i had enough money left over so first of all disclaimer this video is basically me talking about what worked for me it might not work for everybody it might work for you if you try it um, but I want you guys to keep in mind that this is what worked for me, okay? I don't need no keyboard warriors coming at me like Like fam, this is what worked for me and I'm sharing it. So that's all, okay? Guys, I saved nearly 100k within the space of like two to three years probably not even that long two years basically so towards the end of 2019 was when i decided to really really take my savings seriously and actually try and save to move out i was comfortable in my mom's house i'm not gonna lie like my mom was very lenient she let me do what i want she wasn't strict so i can understand why a lot of people really find it hard to live at home um and then they end up like moving out to rent because you don't have your own space my mom literally would give up her room which was bigger just to make sure that i was comfortable but she didn't obviously i didn't make her do that but literally <laughs> i remember one day i said to her mom like my room's too small i've got stuff everywhere and she was like do you want my room do you want to take my room and i was just like no mommy like i just feel like i need to move out because she did not want me to move out at all but anyway so towards the end of 2019 i decided to take my savings seriously i was just like you know what like what am I doing with my money? Like, I'm literally just traveling, living life, going out, eating out, doing this, like just spending my money on so many things that are so unnecessary. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to be strict on my saving. I'm going to give myself two years to save enough money to move out. Guys, when I tell you, like, sometimes when you're intentional about something, like, it literally all just falls into place. So I think I signed to Insanity in 2020 during lockdown. And that was like after I'd decided to take like saving seriously. And when I signed to Insanity, I didn't think that I was going to make so much money from influencing. Like I feel like influencing only recently became a thing before back then, everybody just used to take pictures for the fun of it. Right. So I didn't really take influencing seriously. I just thought, you know what, I'm going to save my law salary and use that to you know hopefully one day save enough to buy a house so yeah guys i'm not gonna lie i had four streams of income okay that's how i was able to save so much money i feel like having one stream of income in this country is so so hard to be able to save like properly i had four streams of income one i was making wigs you guys remember esper train wigs i don't do that no more girl <laughs> I do not do that no more child it was a lot so i was making wigs espatron wigs and you guys know like wigs cost a lot of money so so one wig could be like between 200 to 500 pounds and in one month i would have maybe like five or six orders that i was doing don't get it twisted even though my page was quite small and i wasn't really posting everything that i was doing i was making a lot of money from making wigs like even my cousins would buy from me like just so many people were so supportive of the fact that i was making wigs so i think that was like 2019 yeah that was like 2019 that was when i started doing that so um yeah so i was making wigs so that was making me money I was, I was making money on youtube so that was my second stream of income i would make videos and i was like posting on my own youtube channel like 2019 and 2020 my videos were regular so i was making money on youtube and um, then i was making money on instagram the money i made on instagram when i signed to insanity insane like i made so much money 
and also I got a training contract and I was on a trainee salary which was way more than being on a legal secretary salary because you guys know that the time that I was looking for training contracts I was working well if you don't know now you know because I feel like my day one subscribers will know I was working as a legal assistant and a legal secretary before I actually found a training contract to train as a lawyer a solicitor so in that time I was just like I was saving my money so obviously when I became a trainee I was earning more than I was when I was a legal assistant so I was able to save more there but what I did was my other three streams of income not touching like literally I did not touch that money it's like I was saving all of that money and what I did was I had three saving accounts so one saving account that was literally cannot touch come rain come sun even on a rainy day you ain't touching that like that is just that is the money that nobody is touching that one is like you've saved it is non-existent to me now basically that saving account was like that was the one that i was like every month maybe i was spending like 2k in there 3k like but it was money that wasn't being touched then i had another savings account which was the help to buy isa account that help to buy isa account i remember i think it was 2019 when they stopped it i remember telling all my friends guys this is a good way to save it because you were putting away 200 pounds every single month without touching it so i had that as well the thing with the isa account is it's a it's like a direct debit from your accounts every time you get paid that 200 pounds is going in automatically so you don't even see it to even say you want to spend it so I had that account and then I had one saving account that was like, okay, on a rainy day, we can touch that one on a rainy day. But it has to be a really, really rainy day. Like you needed that money. You really, really needed it, Shola. That's why you're touching it. It's not a thing where it's like, oh, you know, I want to treat myself to a nice little spa this weekend and I'm going to, no, there was none of that. I'm not going to lie, a lot of luxury stuff that, I would consider luxury now that I do now like spa days and just random things that you know people do regularly I wasn't doing that in those two years I wasn't doing it like I was just saving 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 so the first two not being touched and that was like even if my mum asked me for money those two accounts the first two that I told you guys about the help to buy ISA and the one that was like absolutely no touching there was absolutely no touch in that bank account those two were not to be touched. And then I had the other savings account, which was like, okay, if my mum wanted money or if a cousin in Nigeria called me and they wanted money or like something was wrong with my car and I needed to fix it, like that was a savings account that was like, I can dip in and out of. A lot of the money that I was making on the side was going into those two savings accounts that I wasn't really allowed to touch. When I'd get paid from law, like my trainee solicitor role salary, I'd basically do the 60-40 split. So 40% of it, I would try and save into the third savings account, which is the one that I can dip into. And the rest of it would go on like my bills, enjoyment. So that was like what I would spend in that month. Food, enjoyment, petrol, just things that I needed to pay for. And that was that. But I just feel like if I didn't have all these extra like income that I was making and all these other things that I was doing, I would not have been able to save all money that I saved basically. And also... Um, in 2021, I, li I don't know if you guys listened to the Black Girls Living podcast, I was on their podcast, I'm going to link it down below where I spoke a little bit more about my journey um, in terms of like saving, looking for a house, estate agents, all of that stuff. In 2021, I had a massive dip into my like savings accounts. You know the one I said I wasn't going to touch? I was touching it I was, and I was so angry. <laughs> but that's the thing about life like there's always ups and downs and like also like guys i didn't have one tip i would say when you're saving is don't give yourself a goal don't be like oh i want to save 50k by the end of the year because if you're giving yourself a goal you're gonna work yourself up so much that if you're not saving that money you're gonna upset yourself and it's just gonna be like oh what's the point save as much as you can number one that's my first number one tip save as much as you can and be very disciplined the one thing about me is i'm i consider myself a very disciplined person i wake up at 5 a.m to go to the gym just because i know after work i'll be too tired to go but somehow i have to fit it in discipline is very very important it's one thing to be motivated and be like yeah i want to save but being disciplined and know that you're not touching your money 
is a whole new level like it's a mind thing like it's really really a mind thing i know it sounds mad like it sounds mad my mom would need money for something that she wanted maybe like one ashway b or something yeah or something that i didn't really consider important and i'll just be like mom i'm sorry i don't have the money for it one thing about me if i'm borrowing someone money or i'm giving someone money i'm not expecting it back it's not coming back to me so it's a dip out of my savings that i know will not come back that like, that's one thing that my mom has taught me as well when you lend people money just forget about it but anyway so what i was saying about 2021 so in 2021 so okay i started saving in 2019 right so when i got to 2021 i was like okay i have about 55k now that is more than enough for a deposit in the area that i live i live in kent i've always lived in kent guys since i was in primary school so this is basically my my home my hometown um so i was just like okay i have enough for a deposit now let me go and see a mortgage advisor cool so i went to see a mortgage advisor well financial advisor and it was just like um you have the deposit but we can you know start you off now and do a mortgage for you but because of your expenses and the things that you're currently paying for which are my bills like i had law school payments that were like nearly 300 pounds coming out of my account every month um i had my car you guys remember if you've been following me from day one you remember my white mercedes it was an amg sport like it was just so nice all white all red interior it was just my dream car and i still miss that car to this day i had that car that i was paying for that was like 300 and something pounds per month i had my other bills my phone bill gym like just so many things i was paying for although i was able to pay all of that and still save for a deposit and even like go on holidays and stuff my expenses were too much and the bank was like if your expenses are like this your mortgage interest rate is gonna be like this basically and like if your interest rate is up that means that your mortgage payments every month is gonna be high therefore we can't lend you this amount we can only lend you this amount like my affordability just wasn't right basically so i had to get rid of my car and when i went to mercedes like guys I need to return this car they like was like oh you're still in your contract so you're gonna have to pay us like 5k to come out of it i said yeah <sighs> money out of my deposit gone i said okay cool then so then i got rid of that car and then that was like 5k to get rid of it and then i bought another car which is which is the a-class mercedes that i drive now i was really sad about it so they were like don't worry like once you have your mortgage you can always go back to mercedes and get your car again like and even get a better car and i was just like oh like i was just really sad about it because i didn't have a car for like two months when i was like so then i started looking for cars and i ended up buying another mercedes cash down and that cost me like 15k then i had to pay like my insurance one thing about me i like to pay like insurance and stuff like that straight away then i had to pay insurance road tax like stuff like that so i remember like this was that like, in 2021 if you guys can do the math so i basically had like 20 something k left and i was just like this ain't right because that means i have just about enough for like a flat i but i wanted to buy a house one thing about me because i work in the property sector not anymore though guys because i got a new job i got a new job guys i'm not gonna be doing property law anymore thank the lord i'm gonna be just focusing on commercial now like that is commercial corporate law that's what i'm doing now so yeah i got a new job and i start in october and i'm really really excited because property just got a little bit boring a bit repetitive and i'm just over it so yeah i got a new job and i'm excited but anyways we'll talk about my new job in another video so um because i work in property i've always known that buying a flat or an apartment is not as much as a good investment well it depends on what your goals are you knows that buying an actual house is a better investment than buying a flat mainly because like when you buy a flat or an apartment you still have like ground rent to pay you have service charge to pay and that can be really really expensive they can if you watch my how to buy a property in the uk video like you will know like buying an apartment or a flat is basically your lease it's a leasehold property which means you're leasing a part of somebody else's freehold it's it's a very complicated thing i think i explained it in another video i'm going to link it down below but yeah so i've always known that i wanted to buy a house so with like 20 something k i was just thinking i don't think i have enough to buy an actual house like i wanted so then i was just like you know what this one year i'm gonna save like i've never saved before guys when i tell you i was so strict with my savings that my mom thought i was broke she thought that i was just so broke 
but I was actually saving so much that and that was the year that everybody was in luxury black girl and I was like oh my god I want to be luxury I want to be in luxury I want to wear a dress that costs like 500 pounds I want to do all of that I want to have you know designer this designer that I want to do all of that but I had to be disciplined so so imagine in January 2021 I had all that cash loss like October 2021 I had like 80k saved yeah I'm ready now nobody can tell me anything I'm going to see another mortgage advisor you lot need to <laughs> come correct this time because I am ready <laughs> I am ready so then yeah so then I went to see also guys the way I save is like I'm a very rigorous saver like I said before if money goes into one that one account you're not seeing it again for a very long time unless unless somebody's dying you should have one savings account that you dip in and out of that's okay but there should be one that is like never ever ever get in touch because that is how you can save properly and also like it's gonna be hard because i know a lot of people don't have second jobs i know a lot of people don't have like a, you know a side hustle but i would say yeah if you have a side hustle or if you have a hobby that you think you can turn into income like making money girl do it when i started making wigs i wasn't the best i didn't even know how to do a frontal wig but i had to learn like i had to teach myself and i had to learn and i was just like come rain come sun we are buying this house it must happen so number one be very disciplined number two have saved two at least two savings accounts that you do not touch at all number three don't give yourself a goal don't say by the end of this year i need to do this this is just what works for me because if you give yourself a goal it's either once you reach that goal you're, you're kind of lenient on yourself or if you don't reach that goal then you, you're hard on yourself and then like it just puts you into this mental breakdown that you don't need because that's what I was doing before like I'd be like oh by the end of this year I want to save 10k and then if I didn't I'd be really really upset with myself and it, like it's not healthy so my tip would be just save as much as you can like keep saving keep saving keep saving and also be very very careful with like how much money you're giving 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 because reality is yeah a lot of people will take 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 from you like take from you but they will never give they will never give like and then like i know it's you know in the bible it says give and you shall receive like realistically nobody's giving back these days if you are giving 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 a lot of people don't give back to you i'm not gonna lie like it's very hard i know people will be like oh can you borrow me this much can you sometimes you have to be like focus on yourself and be like no i don't have it i'm sorry they will find that money from somebody else this is your own journey this is your own like i had to be very strict with myself like and be like you know what i can't be the good samaritan all the time sometimes i have to be the good samaritan to myself first and i'm so happy i did because look now i have my own house and don't get it twisted i still borrowed people money somebody still owes me 2k to this day and if they're watching this video they'll know themselves that's me i was giving 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 and it got to a point where it's like no I need to be good to my own self first because people will not help you let me tell you that now people, even your day one bro 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 broski they won't give you they won't return the same favor because you you'll be giving giving when you need they won't give to you my managers came through i'm not gonna lie they were booking me left right center and it was so crazy because that year i had so much going on i had my exams because as a trainee before you qualify you have exams to do you have to attend courses i had so many courses to attend i was still doing youtube i was still doing instagram my managers were booking me jobs i still had my nine to five monday to friday to do so how i managed to do all of that within that year was crazy it was just discipline i'm not gonna lie like i was like after work recording after work editing during work editing like i was trying to fit in everything as much as i can and one thing you need to have is be organized if you're like me and you have so many different ways to make money so many streams of income you need to be organized like and you need to make time for yourself like be selfish with your time because if you are giving yourself to everybody you're giving your time to everybody this one is doing party you must be there this one is doing get together you must be there instead of you to be at home making a wig because that wig is gonna make you the money you're at the party you are doing this you're, you're not gonna reach your goal 
you need to focus on your that's the thing with saving it's not just about the money it's about how you spend your time as well focus on yourself the word is enough for the wise okay focus on yourself and you will you will do it and that's one thing i keep telling everybody everybody's gonna get to that goal everybody's gonna buy a house eventually we're all gonna do it it's not about or oh, who did it first or who done it the best we're all gonna do it it just you just need to focus you just need to focus and just put your mind to it it's not every event you must go to save that money it's 30 pounds save it you think it's not going towards anything it is one thing as well like don't give yourself a goal of like oh, i need to have this much to do this much because realistically if you're buying a loan there's only so much the bank can lend you based on how much you make so for me the bank could only lend me a certain amount because obviously i was buying by myself so i had to do a lot of topping up myself so don't also the 10 percent deposit thing is kind of a myth you need 10% to exchange contracts, but most times you're still topping it up. For instance, if the bank can only lend me 250K and say my house is worth 300K and I've saved 10% deposit, which is 30K. So where's the remaining 20K coming from if my house is 300K and the bank can only lend me 250? That's what I mean by topping it up. So if that makes sense, I'm going to put some maths on the, on the screen so you guys can like understand what I'm saying. So that's basically what I had to do. I had to top up my deposit by like, a lot um in order for me to be able to buy a three bedroom house and obviously i'm not saying like a house is the only option you can buy a flat even if you start from small i always tell people this if this is what you feel like you can afford one bed flat do it two bed flat do it two bed house do it three bed house do it what you can do is what you can do and what the bank can lend you is what they can lend you based on your income i think that is how i saved i was just basically saving and saving and saving until i got to a point where i was just like surely this is enough now what i did is i saved way more than enough to buy um furniture so i had enough money to immediately go and buy furniture buy this buy that i just wanted to have enough money to furnish my house so i was just saving and saving and saving and also like i said don't forget to still enjoy yourself even when you're saving so yeah that is basically how i saved that was my strategy that is what i did yeah so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video my next video is going to be things to watch out for when you're actually viewing houses just things that i would like look things that i was looking out for because estate agents are crooks like they will sell you anything any literally like they can sell you anything if you don't know what you're really looking for and if you don't have your own like things that you're not budging on in terms of like what the property must have they will literally sell you anything so my next video is going to be like just things to watch out for when you're viewing houses or viewing flats you can even view for fun even if you don't have a deposit deposit do you know what i mean so that you at least know what you should be looking at so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below your thoughts. If you bought a house as well and you have a saving strategy that you want to put down below, be sure to do it. There is no one way or correct way or wrong way to save. Like You just have to do what works best for you and that is what worked for me. So yeah, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.